So, hey guys, recently I saw Captain Marvel, and it was pretty awesome. I could have totally said Captain Marvel was marvelous, but that pun's kind of dumb and way too easy. But really, there's one problem with Captain Marvel. It, it's not that big. It's not like that trailer thing I talked about for my Lego Movie 2 review. And it's not really something that I can discernibly put my finger on, but I kind of feel like Captain Marvel isn't as good as many of the other Marvel solo movies. It's not bad or anything. It just feels kind of subpar and yeah I'm gonna have to talk about this in my non-spoilery review and speaking of non-spoilery reviews if you guys are new to the channel or haven't seen many of my movie reviews before basically what I try to do is first I give you my non-spoilery review obviously so then you guys who haven't seen it can kinda get a feel of if I've liked it or not and if it'd be the kind of movie for you and after that I move on to the spoilers, with an obvious spoiler warning in between. Anyways, let's talk Captain Marvel. So yeah, I really didn't feel like Captain Marvel lived up to expectations. I mean, I didn't expect it to be that good judging by its kinda boring trailers, but I expected it to, I don't know, feel as good as all the other Marvel solo movies. Now, not all the Marvel solo movies are amazing, some... <laughs> a little less than others, but most of the time they are at least pretty good. But Captain Marvel felt to me just kind of decent, not necessarily good, not necessarily bad, but just decent, passable, which is extremely okay, but you can kind of see my dissatisfaction with Marvel because getting good movies from them is something I'm used to. Overall though, the story was great, it had great characters, it was really funny. I think one of the main reasons that Captain Marvel kind of felt subpar was that it had a lot of setup for Avengers Endgame and a couple other Marvel solo movies which I won't mention because that'd be a spoiler but yeah I felt like it handled it pretty well it was more of a hinting at other movies than a direct prequel to them I mean okay maybe it was more prequel than other movies but it wasn't full-on prequel it was balanced out pretty well let's just say that what else it balanced out pretty well was the space aspect of Captain Marvel and the earth aspect of Captain Marvel I kind of mentioned this problem a while back in my Avengers Infinity War trailer video the problem in this movie is they might focus too much on the cosmic side of Marvel and or too much on the Earthbound side of Marvel and either or will kind of ruin it because Captain Marvel's both an Earth-based hero and a space-based hero. She kind of goes between the two. And yeah, I felt they did a pretty good job representing both sides of Captain Marvel. And speaking of Captain Marvel herself, what was not boring was her character. You see, going into this movie, I had no worries about the plot. Sure, they didn't give us a lot in the trailers to work off of, but... They do that in a lot of Marvel movies now, and I don't doubt the Marvel writers will give us a bad movie ever again. But what I was worried about was Captain Marvel herself, because these trailers did not give us anything to go off of for her character, which for some reason worried me a whole lot more than the plot thing. But no, they give us like nothing on her. All the trailers gave us were she was once a pilot here on Earth, she got space powers, and she lost her memories. That's it. Nothing on her character. Like in all the trailers, she only smiled once. And like, even in the Avengers Endgame trailer, what do we get? Just like, the slightest smirk? From the trailers, she kind of felt like a blank slate to me. Is she super smart? Is she shy? Is she a hothead? No, wait, no, not like that. I, I mean over cocky, not, not literally a hothead. You can see why I was worried, though. I, I kind of felt like she was a blank slate. But after seeing the first scene in this movie, though, which I'm not going to spoil, you can tell who she is pretty quickly. The way I describe her is she's a very fun-loving person who doesn't care about the rules as much, but has a soft spot for justice. I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but, but that's her character. Sure, she has some serious moments when they count, but most of the time she's that kind of hero that will crack jokes during a fight. Another thing about Captain Marvel that I think you guys would like to know is that she 
is really powerful. She has like infinite energy powers, I guess. I don't really know how to describe like the power she has, but like she shoots energy blasts and flies and stuff, and it is really cool. And for a second, I was worried that her almost near infinite power set would kind of ruined the Avengers Endgame final fight with Thanos. Because even though watching Captain Marvel fly in and beat the pulp out of Thanos would be an awesome fight, it would make a terrible movie and be pretty boring. However, that will not happen because Captain Marvel can't beat Thanos, at least on her own. As I said before, Captain Marvel has like limitless energy. However, she will not be able to defeat Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet because not only does Thanos have like infinite energy with the Power Stone, but he's also got the Time Stone, the Space Stone, the Reality Stone, the Soul Stone, the Mind Stone, and that's about it, but that's, that's a lot against just one infinitely powerful person. And he beat the Hulk, who Hulk has like limitless strength with just the Power Stone. So I could see him beating Captain Marvel in a fight. However, she will make a great member to the Avengers team when Avengers Endgame comes out. And I am really excited. I also have this one idea I have, but I think I'm going to make a tiny micro video on it in the future, right before Avengers Endgame comes out, about some of my theories. It won't be that long, don't worry. And that's all I really have to say about Captain Marvel. That isn't spoilery. Overall, I thought the movie was pretty okay, and I've made it sound really bad in this review, but it's actually pretty, pretty good. Now, if you want to see it in the theaters right now, and if, if it's still in the theaters at the time of this video, go ahead and check it out if you really want to see it. However, if you're not a very hardcore Marvel fan, you might not understand some of the references they have, and they have a lot of references. However, when this comes out on DVD, I totally recommend that you check it out. Even if it's not terribly good, it's worth at least just one watch. Anyways, on to the spoilers. Spoiler warning. I can't believe Nick Fury lost his eye in a battle with his sister that he never knew about after she broke his magic hammer and I'm just kidding. That's how Thor loses his eye. Although, now he has a robot eye, but we're not gonna get into that. But really, Spoilers beyond this point. And actually, the way Nick Fury loses his eye in this movie is a lot more surprising than anyone thought. The comic relief cast scratched it out. And my friend Devin totally predicted this. You remember Devin from my all-nighter video? While we were walking into this movie, Devin told us, uh, us being me and my friend Stu, that his theory was the cat was gonna scratch out Nick Fury's eye. And I thought he was joking and that Marvel would never do something as dumb as that to get a joke, but... They did, and I can't watch this scene from Captain America Winter Soldier the same way ever again. Last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. <laughs> Although technically, the cat wasn't a cat, it was actually an alien species that looks like a cat called a flurkin. And my friend Stu actually immediately looked this up right after the movie, and not only are flurkins in the comics, but they also look like cats in the comic. So good one for you, Marvel. You get consistency points. And while Stu was searching for his flurkin thing, he also found that in the comics, Goose the Cat's name was originally Chewy after Chewbacca from Star Wars. I don't see why Disney would not want another Star Wars reference in their Marvel movies, but nah, I don't know. But I was right, the cat is not a scrawl. I, I, I didn't speculate that the cat wasn't a scrawl anywhere, but I knew it wasn't a scrawl for the longest time. Everybody who's seen the Cat Marvel trailers were all like, oh, the cat's important, it must be a scrawl or something. And I'm like, nope, that'd be too easy, Marvel would never do that. Although, again, they did have the cat scratch out Nick Fury's eye, so. I, I was disproved that one. Another thing I correctly predicted, though, was the cat's end credit scene. You see, while me and my friends were waiting for the end credit scene to pop up, we were talking about how usually the second end credit scene is a little more funny and not super important to the story as most other end credit scenes are. And we were also talking about how the cat will have to barf up or poop. 
the Tesseract for the next movie. And so I put two and two together and I speculated it and I was right. Also, speaking of the Tesseract, the Tesseract is in this movie! All up until Avengers Infinity War, I have been searching for Infinity Stone cameos. Going to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Nothing. Going to Thor Ragnarok, one we've already seen before. Going to Black Panther. I thought it was the Soul Stone, but apparently it wasn't. And after Infinity War comes out, I kind of feel like, oh, I guess we're gonna be done seeing Infinity Stone cameos because Infinity War's already happened. We don't need to know where all the Infinity Stones are anymore. But nope, they just decided to throw the Tesseract in this one when I least expect it, and man, was it awesome. But I thought they found the Tesseract when they found the Cap Frozen. Captain America, I mean. I can't say cap anymore without making it sound confusing. But actually, this Tesseract thing still fits in the Marvel timeline because they actually didn't find the Tesseract when they found Captain America. It was kind of implied. However, the Tesseract fell through Red Skull's ship before it crash landed. And so even though it'd be in the same underwater vicinity, it'd be at least a couple miles away. And I think they did find it a little bit before they found Captain America. And actually, this clip right here directly says that Howard Stark, Tony Stark's dad, finds the Tesseract while he was looking for Captain America. Howard Stark fished that out of the ocean when he was looking for you. And while you would think that Howard Stark would give such a precious object, the S.H.I.E.L.D., especially when he has connections with the early S.H.I.E.L.D., apparently he gave it to the Air Force for some reason. To be honest, I'm not really sure why that makes sense or how it works, but the Kree stealing the Tesseract from the U.S. Air Force does fit in the timeline, so I can't complain. Also, as I said before, Captain Marvel has a lot of setup for an Avengers Endgame, but it has even more setup to the original Avengers. Captain Marvel unveils so many things about the first Avengers movie we didn't even know or even even think about. It has the story behind how S.H.I.E.L.D. got the Tesseract, it has the story behind how the Avengers Initiative got started, it has the story behind how the Avengers Initiative got the name Avengers Initiative. Also speaking of her nickname inspiring the name Avengers, what kind of nickname is even Avenger? I mean, in the movie, they say they won't let her fight in dog fights in the air because she's a girl, so what the heck is she avenging? Feminism, I guess? I have no idea. Captain Marvel also references a whole ton of other movies in the MCU, none of which I can reference because they aren't out yet. You see, Disney finished their deal of buying Fox Studios, which means that they meaning Marvel, can make X-Men movies and Fantastic Four movies. If the Fantastic Four has a movie in a couple of years, Captain Marvel sets it up very nicely. You see, one of the Fantastic Four's usual enemies is the Skrulls. Now, I know the Skrulls are made to be the victims of this movie and, like, the Kree are just hurting them, but originally in the comics, the Kree and the Skrull were more of equal races that were both fighting for supremacy of the universe. Now I know what you're thinking, Skrulls will not be evil in the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? Right? Wrong. And do you know why? Because Captain Marvel is set in the past. You see, after the Skrulls find a home planet to live on, a lot can change in a couple of years. There will be a day when they forget Captain Marvel helped them, and they will just start trying to conquer the universe themselves. And this will lead them to facing off against the Fantastic Four, creating the Super Skrull, which is basically a Skrull with all the powers of the Fantastic Four. This will even lead to possibly a secret invasion Marvel movie, which is basically where the Skrulls start taking over Earth with their shape-shifting abilities, and the Avengers and a whole ton of other heroes don't don't know who to trust anymore. And these would make amazing movies and I am really excited. Also, speaking of the Fantastic Four and their villains, Ronan the Accuser was in this movie. The guy I've been talking about in almost all of my Marvel movie reviews. And did he do anything remotely interesting? No. I'm kind of disappointed that his character wasn't redeemed from Guardians of the Galaxy. Also, speaking of the Korean setups, one thing I almost forgot to add in this review was that they had the supreme intelligence in this movie. The supreme intelligence is basically the ruler of the Kree, and he basically looks like this in the comics. 
Yeah, pretty weird and ugly. But really, I'm excited to see the Supreme Intelligence as almost a villain in this movie because they reference that it has a true form no one has seen. And I don't know about you, but that's definitely gonna happen in a future movie with the Kree. And I'm really excited for that one too. Anyways, that's all I have to say for this review. I had a whole lot more I wanted to put in the script, but I, these were the most important things I thought I'd want to talk about and in a very cohesive manner. I like this movie a whole lot. Not as much as many of the other Marvel solo movies, but I'm definitely gonna give this a second watch when it comes out on DVD. Let me know how you guys felt about this movie, if if you've seen it. I mean, this is the spoiler review, but let me know what you guys thought about this movie down in the comments below. If you want to. You don't have to comment if you don't want to. Anyways, though, that's all I've got to say about Captain Marvel. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.